I'm not sure about you, but I'm having a very hard time taking Joe Rogan seriously on politics, especially when he has a strong political stance because he remains in the middle. He said he liked RFK Jr., but now RFK is supporting Trump, but I haven't heard Joe Rogan comment on that at all. He hasn't commented on this election in terms of which side he's going to support. And just in my opinion, if you're not willing to take a stand and be transparent about what you think, and then you have this show where you talk about politics seemingly on every single show. Joe Rogan will say, oh, I'm just a comedian, but he brings up politics all the time. Um, I just can't respect when he has these strong political opinions, yet he chooses to fence it. I do not like that. I'd actually rather listen to someone, to be honest, I disagree with politically, but at least is telling me, hey, this is my, like, I have some skin in the game. So listen to this comment here from Joe Rogan. About getting the job. I just want to hear, like... You know how they're going to accomplish all this stuff. Well, they're going to do it once they get in, even that's, though they're already in. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the that seems to be the typical response, right? Well, one thing that you can see, like really clearly, is there is a ferocious effort to stop Donald Trump from becoming president again that I've never seen before. I've never seen. I've seen. See, like, I, does anyone else feel this way? Because Joe Rogan's still, I believe, the most popular podcast on earth. Certainly over a period of time, he would be. Sometimes he fluctuates one to two or whatever, but he is, like, in a, from a long-term basis, the most popular podcast on earth. But I just don't – I can't buy this anymore. I just can't. Like, he has these strong political opinions, but then zero transparency about who he's going to vote for. So he can go on and on about, oh, the Democrats do this. The There's all these problems at the border, all these problems that the Democrats have. But – to me, it's just empty words. Tight races. I've seen people very divided. You know, I, I've seen it for years. There's always been, like, a division between the Republicans and Democrats in this country, but not. Do you know what I mean? Like, he could just choose to do that, but then talk about politics only a little bit, but that's not the case. Like, if you watch this show, a common theme is politics. I, I'm not exactly sure, but if I had to guess, it's the thing he talks about the most. Like comedy, maybe, but I think politics probably happens more often on his show. He always has political people on his show, and they always talk about politics. Not like this. Not like this, where the guy almost gets killed twice, and they don't even talk about it. It's scary, man. It's nuts. It's scary. Almost gets killed twice, and the second one, they just brushed it off. Like, I don't even think the guy got a shot off. Huh. Yeah. Like, the guy was set up at a... Yeah, see, like, I just... Anyway, I'd rather hear him talk about his comedy club or whatever, just just on the fact that he's not willing to say either side. I would, to be honest, have more respect for him in terms of politics. Like, in terms of being a podcaster, I certainly have a lot of respect for him because um, people say he's like a big meathead or whatever, but I don't agree with that at all. I think he asks really good questions, and he can track a ton of, like, a huge range of subjects. He can go into, like, scientific uh, topics and at least be knowledgeable enough to ask the right questions and you can do it with a whole bunch of different subjects so I think if, in terms of a podcaster I do think he deserves the title of the best podcaster but so even a guy like Bill Maher like the the complaint to Bill Maher would be he claims that he's a leftist or at least that he's liberal and he supports Democrats and I like he does he always supports the Democrat from the time I've ever been aware of him at least he says that, though. So even when he says that and then he, he criticizes the Democrats, which he does all the time, some people say that that's like his sort of shtick to like kind of get right wingers to watch his show. But like here, he's making fun of Gen Z, basically saying, what, what have you done to Gen Z? Uh, here promising. he's kind of making fun of Kamala Harris. I still have more respect for this just on the fact that he's willing to own the fact that he's a Democrat. I, I, I really do not, even Lex Friedman, I just think, even if you consider yourself a moderate, a centrist, and if you want to talk about politics all the time, I believe, and this is my opinion, when it comes down to election time, you should say, I'm going this way, or I'm going the other way. And there's still time, so maybe Joe Rogan will come out in a couple of weeks and say that I'm going to support Trump. Um, that's certainly, if you pay, pay attention to his podcast at all, that certainly would be the way that he is leaning, based on the fact he criticized Democrats way more often now and he criticized Republicans, but in lieu of that, I don't know. Because, for example, there are people like Russell Brand, who I believe historically was a Democrat, but he's at this rally here today, Rescue the Republic, and it's with RFK, and it has like the Make America Healthy 
again, branding on it. So I, I'm not sure if he's explicitly endorsed Trump, but I would consider this an endorsement of Trump. But you're, 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 you're with RFK Jr. and this Make America Healthy Again campaign, which has kind of mo like joined forces in a way with the Make America Great Again. So Russell Brand, I consider his pol political takes to have a lot more weight than Joe Rogan's. Identity based on that principle of Christian love and forgiveness. And I'll take a risk, a risk greater than finding yourself in the acquaintance of the Clintons or finding yourself on a flight with Jeffrey Epstein. So I just, I just clicked on a random spot. I speak I'm as gonna... a man who went to Vegas with Diddy and was safely in my bed by 11 <laughs> I don't know p.m. I'm talking about here, but I'll skip ahead because another person I go, I want to. Protesters. Is, they yeah, don't Jimmy Dore again. Protesting. At least Jimmy Dore is willing to put on the line here. He's at this event. Like, I, th the fact that you're speaking at this event, this Make America Healthy Again, RFK was at this event, it's called Rescue the Republic. I would perceive that, and they probably know that people will perceive that as a, like, support of Donald Trump. Because it's this crew of characters, like, yeah, Jordan Peterson, RFK Jr., etc. And we'll see what he's talking Four. about. Here. And it's a good thing they I don't... did hear part of this. He was talking about kind of being... Um, questioning the the covid because he said he was vaccine injured oh because if they did they'd be fucking right <laughs> i have my zionist friends who try to get me to go along with israel they say they say to me they go so I, i'm not even sure know, exactly I... what i'm probably just popping into the middle of a speech but anyway i want to make that point that i have a hard time taking joe rogan seriously on politics so if you disagree with that you can let me know in the comments maybe i'm Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm being too unfair to Joe Rogan, but that is my take as of now. So with that said, thank you for watching this video. Uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.